What is going on guys? My name is Bucky Roberts and welcome to your very first tutorial in Wi-Fi wireless security. Now in this tutorial series, I'm going to be teaching you guys a whole bunch of stuff related to Wi-Fi security and I'll show you guys how to do a bunch of awesome things like view people's traffic, how to crack Wi-Fi keys, how to boot people off the internet, which is always fun. And I'll even show you guys how to create a fake access point. So anyone trying to get on the internet, they're actually going to connect to you, your computer, instead of the router that they were trying to connect to. And we can have a whole bunch of fun with that. However, before we begin, I need to give you guys a little disclaimer. Whenever you're following along with these tutorials and doing the stuff that I'm going to be showing you, you need to have permission for the network. So if it's your own network or let's say a company hired you to, you know, review their network, make sure that you have written permission if you don't own it. And the reason for that is because a lot of the stuff it is illegal if you just like walk into a Starbucks or a library and, and start looking at people's traffic. That's illegal and you can go to jail and well you will go to jail for it. So this tutorial series is for people who are genuinely interested in networking security or if you want to become a pen tester or if you're just, you know, maybe a parent and you want to see what websites your kids are going to because, I don't know, you think they may be talking to some creepy dudes online, whatever. So again, make sure that this is your own network, no one else's, or you have written permission from a company or whoever hired you. And uh, yeah, now you're ready to move on. So to get started with Wi-Fi security, you need two things. The first thing is a distribution of Linux. A lot of the features, other operating systems like Windows and OS X, they block, but Linux is completely open source. We're going to have complete control over it. And the distribution that I'm going to recommend, any distribution of Linux is going to work, but I'm going to recommend Kali Linux. Now, the reason that I'm going to recommend this is because it already has about 90% of the tools that we're going to use pre-installed. So they're already built right into the distribution. So we don't have to waste time, uh, you know, learning how to install it and configure it correctly. That's, you know, one of the awesome points about Kali. I love it. Download it. And... I should probably mention this as well. In order to follow along with these tutorials, you need a basic understanding of Linux and networking. Now, you don't have to be like a systems administrator by any means. So if you just go watch my Linux tutorials and my networking tutorials, then that's going to give you a nice, solid foundation and teach you guys all the basics. And once you have a solid grasp on everything, then you're ready to move back into these tutorials. So I'm not going to be covering the basics of Linux or networking, so that's why I said that. So anyways, once you have any distribution of Linux, preferably Kali, installed, or you can run it from a virtual machine, doesn't matter. The next thing you need is a wireless adapter. Now I'm guessing that you already have a wireless card or a wireless adapter, same thing, in your laptop. But whenever you're following along with these videos, you may notice that some things don't work exactly how you'd like. And that's because you can't just use any wireless adapter because you need it to be able to do specific things. So the things we want our wireless card to do are special things like monitor mode, packet injections, as you can see right here. And we'll learn exactly what those are later on. But basically, I'll give you guys a real brief overview. So whenever you connect to the internet on your laptop in every normal day life, your laptop is only designed for your own conversation, you and the computer, whatever server you're going to online. So if you're at Starbucks and you know people around you are going to Instagram, thenewboston.com, YouTube, whatever, your computer, whenever it sees that traffic, that Wi-Fi, it just ignores it. And that's great. However, we actually want to do things like look at that traffic. So not all wireless cards were designed for this and you need a wireless card with a specific chipset. So if you guys want to go ahead and learn about chipsets and all that, basically the electronics inside your card that make it perform the way it does, then you can do that. However, if you guys just want to get up and running real quick, then go to this website right here. And I just found this today and this gives you a list of wireless adapters that are not only compatible with Linux, but they have the chipsets that you need 
to perform all of the stuff that we're going to do. So go ahead and pick one of these. And these are USB ones, so you don't have to actually open your laptop like next to the battery and hard drive and install anything. You just buy it, plug it into your computer, and you're good to go. So I am going to be using this one. I had this one for a while. I love it. It's 12 bucks. TP-Link. This is the model number. And again, it's just a USB one. Boom, boom, boom. Plug it in and you can connect to wireless networks. Another famous one, while well, it's famous among the Wi-Fi, uh, you know, security community, not really famous, but it's uh, this one right here. So this is an alpha and I have this one too. And I use it for, well, I have this weird antenna, but um, this is the model number of that. But if you just want to look online, look at reviews, make sure you find one that's compatible with Kali Linux. And I prefer a USB one since they're a lot easier. You don't got to install them. But uh, yeah, there you go. So that's all you need to get up and running those two things. And once you have those, you're ready to move on to my next video. So see you then.